This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to Battlebright Sage. So today I'd like to talk about something a little bit more team oriented, communication. I'll mostly be focusing on how to communicate in voice chat with your pre-made team, but I'll throw in some stuff that might be helpful in solo queue games as well. Communication is something that I've seen a lot of people asking about recently. In Team Q, the way you communicate is something that is just as important as your individual mechanics. As with any competitive team game, keeping communication clear and concise is super important. A lot of stuff in this game should be understood on an individual level. For example, you shouldn't need to call that Jade is charging Snipe. Everyone should just learn to listen out and avoid it. In a similar way, target focus is often implied. If a golden opportunity arises, call it out of course. For example, if Jade is in your back line and she has no cooldowns, it's definitely worth calling out to focus Jade. But in an ideal world, each individual on the team should be aware of enemy and ally positioning. And if you hear Jade has no space and you can see that Jade is in a bad position, you should instinctively know what that means. Your teammate said that Jade has no space and you can see that Jade is in a bad position. You shouldn't need to be told to focus her. Being able to understand what a callout means helps keep communication more simple. So let's start with the most important callouts. Enemy cooldowns. If you're only going to communicate one thing, it should be enemy cooldowns. A lot of people might focus on coordinating big combos, but I wouldn't worry about that until you have the rest of your callouts down. So the very first thing you need to learn to call is enemy cooldowns, but which cooldowns do you call? So in general, you want to call out mobility, iframes and defensives. Every champion has them and once they're down, they become easy targets. Let's give you a few examples. Rygon has space and parry, Shifu has counter and immaterial, Lucy has barrier and roll, and Esmo has space and Q. There are other cooldowns that are worth calling out later on, but focus on defensives and iframes first. For example, later on you might want to call out Lucy's clarity potion. If she doesn't have it, you can set up an in-cap combo on someone. But just make sure you've got the other stuff down first. So, if you see Rygon use space, call out Rygon no space. Or if he uses his parry, call Rygon no parry. And when he uses both, call out Rygon has nothing. Sometimes it's worth saying these things twice. Burst windows can be hard to come by, so it needs to be clear to your team when you have a window to deal damage. But what do you do with the information your team gives you? In general, you only want to poke and bait people until their counters or reflects are down. So if Rygon uses his parry, call it, and then your whole team knows they can shoot at him without risking a reflect or stun. Likewise with counters, once they're down, your team should do damage to that person because they know they can't counter. Secondly, iframes and mobility. A lot of mobility skills are iframes, but not all of them are. If you know an enemy has no iframes, there are a bunch of abilities that you can throw at them. For example, if Rygon has no space, Ashka can ult him because parry has no effect on AoE abilities. In fact, a lot of ultimates are AoEs, so they don't trigger counters. So quite often, if someone's iframes are down, even if they still have their counter or reflect, you might be able to use your ult on them. Other AoE abilities can also be used when someone has no iframes. Oldor's E ability, for example. So, call out counters and reflects and focus people when they don't have them. Throw AoEs on top of enemies who have no iframes, and if someone has no iframes and no counter or reflect, now's the time to throw everything at them. Snipes, wolves, stuns, just do as much damage as you can before their cooldowns come back. So, as you may have gathered, a huge part of team communication is understanding the implications of a callout as well as making them. So the next thing you need to learn to call out is your cooldowns. Unlike with enemy cooldowns, you don't need to call out everything that you use. Use your iframes when you need them, use your reflex encounters when you need them, you don't need to call it every time. The time you need to make a call about your own cooldowns is when you have no cooldowns. If your counter and iframes are down, make sure you call that out. It should be easy enough to recognise each other's voices once you've played a few games together. In other games it's bad practice, but in Battle Right, I find it's usually okay to say something like, I have nothing. So, if your teammate calls out that they have nothing, what do you do? If you can, then you should use CC to peel for them, or pressure the enemy so they stop focusing your teammate. If they're in danger, you could also use your defensives on them. Thorn's Husk, Tyre's Tornado, and Paloma's Other Side are all great abilities for saving a teammate with no cooldowns. 
So, for obvious reasons, these team defensives should also be cooled when possible. In order to differentiate between enemy and ally cooldowns, I would usually say Paloma no other side for the enemy Paloma and other side used for my own. And then finally we have CC and combos. This is kind of an extension of calling your cooldowns, but it has a different purpose, so it's worth mentioning separately. So ideally, you should already know what combos your team can pull off before getting into a game. CCs aren't that long in this game, so you can't coordinate stuff mid-game. Most CC chains and combos have an initial CC that starts the chain. Quite often this will be an in-cap, but sometimes it can be a petrify because they're the longest CC abilities. Once the in-cap goes down, each team member should instinctively know what to do with it. For example, Jade should snipe an in-cap, Ashka should use his Q on an in-cap, and Croak should use his stun. The best abilities to chain together are stuns, but if you don't have a stun, then you should fire your biggest ability. Just remember to fire your non-stunning abilities after your allies use their stun abilities. Otherwise, you'll just break the in-cap and ruin the whole combo. So how do you coordinate a CC chain? As I said, it usually starts with an in-cap or petrify. And in the case of in-caps, a lot of them are relatively easy to hit. So your best bet is to call when your in-cap ability is available. Just call in-cap ready and your team should know to look out for it. Once you land the in-cap or petrify, a lot of teams will leave the target CC'd for the maximum duration. Partly because this gives you a bit of breathing room, but it's also the easiest way to coordinate burst. If everyone hits their burst right before the in-cap runs out, you have less chance of breaking the in-cap too soon. So, as you may have gathered by now, a huge amount of communication in this game is implied. Your main job is to give each other the most important information. What you do with that information is largely down to individual skill and game sense. Something you may have noticed the lack of is focus this, focus that kind of communication. If you've watched all the basic videos, then you'll know that target focus in this game is dynamic and situational. Target focus is based on positioning and what cooldowns the enemy does or doesn't have. So if you call out cooldowns and recognize when someone has no defensives, then target focus should come naturally. One exception to this is if you want to go for an all-in strategy for the start of a round. Champions like Lucy and Jamong can be quite vulnerable in the first few seconds of a round. Lucy can't iframe until she has energy, and Jamong can't prowl or double space until he has energy or three stacks. They'll get energy and stacks soon enough though, so it's a risky strategy, and I certainly wouldn't rely on strategies like this. So, in conclusion, when you're playing in a team, you want to focus on calling out three things. Enemy cooldowns, your cooldowns, and your CC abilities. As you develop as a team, you may end up with new and unique callouts, but when you're learning to play together, just keep it simple and focus on cooldowns. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more Battle Right guides, news, and discussion. If you'd like to help support the channel and get some unique rewards, then head over to patreon.com slash battlerightsage. And don't forget to check out twitch.tv slash battlerightsage. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.